We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly with head coach Shaka Smart coming your way from Pluckers, the West Campus location here in Austin. I said special guest. You're about to meet special guest. Coach? Welcome to the show. Thank Andrea you. Hootie, head strength coach. Thanks for having me. And and great to have you here. Uh, I um, You're very, very uh, modest about a lot of things, but i got to say this, is that I don't think I ever heard quite so much ballyhooed buildup for a strength coach coming into an athletic program anywhere than I heard with your arrival here uh, coming down uh, from Lawrence, Kansas. Why do you think that is? And then I'm going to let Coach say why he thinks that is. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I just try to do my job and do it really well and be the best at what I can do. So, um, you know, I've had some success and uh, I want to continue that here. Mm -hmm. And, it, it, I mean, there was a great deal of excitement about it uh, because people who know college basketball know uh, about strength and conditioning, know all about uh, what Andrea's been able to do. Well, it's such an important role, uh, the, the strength and conditioning coach, and it's really uh, another term for it is a performance, uh, sports performance coach. And uh, I, I think the, the excitement uh, is, is due to a couple things. Number one, uh, Coach Hootie's reputation speaks for itself. Uh, you know, the, the programs that she's been a part of, the athletes that she's trained, the championships that, that, that she's helped create and win, uh, and, and even what her athletes have done after college. Uh, because remember, our job, uh, in, in addition to the, the winning games, is to, to help these guys become the best version of themselves before they leave here. And, um, you know, she, her reputation coming in here uh, was phenomenal in that regard. And then, you know, I think the other thing is, you know, at, at Texas we want to attract the best. And, uh, you know, that's that's the way that uh, Hootie approaches her job. She wants to be the best with what she does. She wants to build relationships. She wants to help the guys. Um, and, you know, everyone's really excited to have her here. What were the things, and I, I'd like both of you to answer this, but, but Shaka, let me start with you. What were the things that you were expecting from Andrea when she was coming on staff, when, when it became apparent that she would be available for you to, to bring on board, what what went through your mind as to what you were looking for? And then I'd like Andrea to talk about it from her side of it. Well, I think first and foremost, just uh, a relationship to communicate about how we can help our guys. Because the, the thing about coaching is, you know, we have obviously on our staff a lot of different roles. Um, at the end of the day, we're all just working together to help them be the best they can be on and off the court. And obviously the, the, the most challenging component of it is in the game itself, can the guy go out there and perform uh, in, in the context of a team setting. So that was the first thing, just working together on that. Um, you know, I've always been someone that I learned uh, a couple different ways from head coaches I was around that the best thing is to let the strength coaches do their job, you know, and, and, and let uh, kind of the, their experts in certain areas and really follow their lead on that. And obviously with, with hiring uh, Coach Hootie with her expertise, we wanted to do that. Andrea, when, when uh, it became apparent that, that this opportunity was, was here for you, what was your vision about what you wanted to bring to the University of Texas with, with this basketball program? Um, first, and for, <clears throat> first and foremost, I was really excited to work with uh, Coach because I had heard so many great things about him through my career. And um, to come into a place where, you know, he had been and then to be able to come in with a fresh set of eyes and, and, and evaluate what I think is important to creating great basketball players, um, to have that opportunity and then to have the support from the administration to bring in technology and the equipment that we need, I think, I think that, was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. What's the most important responsibility for a strength coach? To keep the guys healthy. We're, we're challenged with that now, yeah. you know, but uh, health and performance are my two top uh, priorities. And um, if we can increase performance while increasing health, um, that, that's what I need and that's what I want and that's what we need as a team. But we're struggling with that right now. now I, it's a great uh, comparison, what you just brought up, the word performance. You mentioned that, that that's another uh, a phrase that goes with it in terms of it. So... The, the layman thinks of performance as wins and losses for a basketball team, but I know it's much deeper for the both of you. 
Well, at the end of the day, it is. Uh, but there are a bunch of littler things that go into winning or losing. Uh, so, for instance, last night, Will Baker scored 20 points. You know, that goes a long <laughs> way into winning. Okay, well, how did he do that? You know, what, what are the components of basketball that allowed him to go out and play? He played a season-high minutes. You know, what, what were his lungs like, you know, to be able to play that way? Um, so we kind of start, we know what we want on the back end. Now we start on the front end with this is what we need to do. The challenging thing, you know, for Coach Hooty is she got here at the very end of the summer. So uh, I've always said, I've been asked a few times about the impact that she's having on our guys, and it's been really, really good. But I've always said the biggest impact is going to be when she has a full off season with a guy like Will Baker. Uh, and again, to go back to the word we use, performance, that's going to directly reflect in his performance on the floor, which is not the only thing that matters, but it is why these guys come here, and it is what everyone's evaluated on. And, and, and you use the word performance as well. How do you envision it with what you're trying to get the guys to achieve in terms of performance? Yeah, this lateral reactive athlete, right? So um, performance is, for me as a coach, is we fly as close to the sun we can as we can without getting hurt. Um, can I call you Coach Icarus then? Yeah, that's Icarus, right? right. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> except, except Icarus did. Yeah, right. that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this, um, the 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 ability to repeatedly produce power and be a lateral reactive, healthy athlete. Um, it, the easiest thing I think a strength coach could, coach could do is make their athletes stronger because all you could do is lift weights. But the thing that we need is um, health. You know, can they do it and can they do it repetitively, especially when the season and the games get dense and can they recover? And there are so many aspects of performance from um, nutrition, sleep, recovery, strength, reactability. You know, you, you could go on and on and on. What mental health you know, all those things affect performance. You uh, you just used a term just for in case for folks on a lateral reactive athlete. Yes. I believe. Explain that. Um, so you have to be able to um, create this level of strength or what I call stiffness in your lower leg and torso to be able to move laterally, but it also uh, requires a level of mobility too that you have to put your whole foot on the ground. So we're trying to create these two opposing dichotomy things and um, create health and performance doing that. It's kind of a sliding scale, a gray area in between the two? Well, we call it a ratcheting. There's a ratcheting effect between, okay, do we work on performance today or do we work on health? Where are we in the week? Where are we in the season? Where are we in the year? And what can we afford to do? And everybody's different. Everybody plays different minutes. Everybody, you know, has a different impact and a different role. So what do I need to do individually with each guy to create that? Shaka, did you notice... uh, from Andrea, something uh, different in, about her style when she came on board. Like you said, it was a late hire and late on staff, but the way she jumped into it with how she approached her position against, uh, as opposed to anybody else you might have seen or heard of or worked with. Well, she, she's jumped in with both feet, which first and foremost has been terrific. Uh, just been all in from the beginning. Uh, the thing that I've always been amazed by is just how many different philosophies there are um, in, in what, what Coach Hootie does. Um, but I guess it's no different than coaching. You know, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat uh, in, in coaching a sport, just like she is in coaching performance. Uh, one of the things that's been phenomenal, and I think it's really helped our guys from the standpoint of accountability in the weight room, is the technology that, that she's brought. Um, and, it's, it's, again, it's really helped give our guys feedback on where they are and then, you know, she's pretty matter-of-fact with them. Hey, you got to be better at this. Or you're really making progress. Look at, look at what you're doing here. You're making strides. Keep that up. Uh, and I think for guys, at the end of the day, our guys really, really want to play well. And they really want to improve their bodies. And they want to they, they wanna get better. Sometimes because of immaturity, there are some things that complicate that. Uh, and it's our job, obviously, to, to kind of you know, pull those things away so that they can move in the right direction. You kind of got a giggle out of that, a chuckle out of that, what he said, <laughs> how it gets in the well, way of that. I, people do f- tend to forget that sometimes these guys come when they're 16, 17 years old. And they, you yeah. know, there are some teams that get guys that are 20, 22 years old. So uh, it depends on your personnel. 
No doubt about it. All right, we're going to visit more with Coach Hootie coming up here. When we continue with Longhorn Weekly from Pluckers, the West Campus location, we'll continue in a moment. Into the front court now. To the left side with it, Courtney Rainey. Rainey, outside Andrew Jones. Quick trigger for three, and it's good. Andrew knocks it down. Texas back in front. Timeout, TCU. We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly with head coach Chaka Smart from Pluckers, the West Campus location here in Austin, and our special guest coach, Andrea Hootie, who handles the strength and performance uh, for these guys. Uh, How would you get started? How does anybody get started in becoming a strength coach? You lift a lot of weights. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get to Carnegie Hall practice? You know, yeah. that, that sort of thing. I mean, you, I mean, you were you were a pretty good volleyball player, if uh, if all of the bio information is correct well, about you. Well, that depends you. on who you ask. Okay. Right? Um, no, but I was the youngest of five kids and in, um, in an athletic family, so I was always trying to play catch up. And when my brothers and sisters were training, and my dad was a coach, my mom was a coach, uh, weightlifting was always around. Yeah. So uh, it, it was a part of who I was growing up. Okay, so how did career-wise that shift for you from being an athlete to a coach? Usually it involves injuries. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. Um, I have a Ph.D. in injuries, I think. <laughs> um, Which should come in handy with this basketball team right absolutely, now. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So the, you know, my goal as a coach is that nobody ever gets hurt, right? But. You know, if you play sports and you play it long enough, somebody's always going to get hurt. Sure. Um, so uh, I had a really cool mentor as a, a strength coach at the University of Connecticut. His name was Jerry Martin. And just the um, inspiration that he provided for me to learn more about the body. Uh, I remember in seventh grade, I took an aptitude test and I came home and I said, Mom, I'm supposed to be a car mechanic. And she said, that's not going to happen. <laughs> right? So... <laughs> I have the mechanical uh, thought process or mind, and um, I got a grad degree in biomechanics. So, you know, I kind of compare the, the body to the car a little bit. So, well, they're mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, under Coach Martin, did that kind of shape your philosophy on how you approach what you do today? Yeah, and you know, every you can list a certain, as Coach was saying earlier, you can list certain ph philosophies and what you do and how you do them. But my philosophy is whatever works. So he said there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. What way can we uh, use to get the athlete to be where they need to be? Uh, you also, uh, obviously, uh, on staff at the University of Connecticut, also uh, worked with and for a couple of uh, Hall of Fame coaches in Jim Calhoun and Gino Oriema. What was that experience like in terms of uh, your experience as it shaped you as a strength coach? I thought it was a perfect experience for me because, you know, as an athlete, I, w I wasn't a great athlete by any means. Um, I actually, I was a better athlete than I was a volleyball player, which okay. I played in college. Yep. So um, when I went to the University of Connecticut, um, to be able to be surrounded by people that were just so focused on being the best that they could possibly be in whatever sport or whatever area they were, and to be driven by that every single day, every hour, every minute of that day, I learned what it took to be a champion. And to take that from a 20, 21 or 22-year-old um, young coach and to be able to live my uh, career and, and do every day what, what I did and what I learned there is, has been just invaluable. As you em embraced those uh, teachings and philosophies, did it, would it be safe to say it evolved over time, your time? I mean, you were beloved at Kansas. Anybody who went to Allen Fieldhouse saw how Coach Hootie was just, everybody was, was wanting to come over and visit with you there. Uh, your, your time at Kansas and now at Texas, did it evolve? over time with your experiences and what you learned in your days up at Connecticut? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the target shrinks a lot. So um, with the technology that we have, uh, we've really set our sights on a, a pretty precise area in, in terms of what we're trying to develop. Now, the exercises are the same, and they've always been the same. You're running, you're jumping, you're lifting, or whatever. Um, but it's where and when and how you do that, I think, I think we've really focused on. Uh, how has technology affected what you do? Um, it helps create a more precise target, for sure, and it helps create better results. Um, 
it, it just uh, gives good feedback in the moment, but then also later to analyze it and look at it and see what we did right and what we did wrong. Have you discovered in the, in the places you are, and this includes the University of Texas, that you get a group of student athletes and all of them immediately understand and buy into what you're doing. (laughs) I I, I knew that sounded a little naive. So toward that end then, how do you shape that to where you get the buy-in from the guys? Um, Everything that we do, we want to do it all the time. So our lives are about repetition. So can we do it consistently? Can we do it on a day-to-day basis where we we see improvement every day? The last thing that I want to do is uh, make an athlete sore or beat them down so much that they don't want to come back. So we do need to make it, um, and I'll say the F word, fun, kind of. Okay. Enjoy it. Uh, enjoy the process. And in the meantime, get better, but feel better, too. What do you enjoy most about it and, and about being at the University of Texas? Um, I enjoy teaching. Uh, I'm a teacher. I, you know, coaches get wins and losses. I don't. You know, so I'm a support staff member. And um, I enjoy teaching, and I enjoy the process of uh, watching people develop, including myself. You know, it, that changes every day, too. It's great to see you. I appreciate the time. Enjoyed uh, uh, visiting with you during the course of the season as well. Yeah, thank you. Coach Andrea Hootie with us. Uh, Coach Smart will join us. We'll get to some of your questions as well when Logworn Weekly continues from here at Pluckers, the West Campus location on the Logworn Network and the Logworn Radio Network from Learfield IMG College. <laughs>